Hello, more from Tannimal's Labs in this evening. Uh, we've been given a new patch update for Raid Shadow Legends. I thought we'd go through it together. Just give you a breakdown of what I think of the new champions. It includes the new Fusion Champion, as you can see on screen. I will just go through what we're expecting, what we know about it, and whether or not we believe these champions are any good. So this is the, the first part of the patch. It's just some, some small notes. The big things to take about it is we can now save our teams, which if we're doing a dragon team and you want to change it, say one for 20 and one for 25, uh, you can also now do the AI changes. Let's make Coldheart use her main A3 when we want to at the start of the battle and not have to worry about it. Or, you know, some other things like Seer is a good example where you don't, she doesn't need, you can always prioritize her A3. Um, some interesting playtime rewards i have to say this looks interesting for those of us above level 50. no longer is it 5k silver we get 20k and then we get 55k and we get two great arcane potions it's a mediocre boost you know it's better than the one little potion we were getting in 5k silver we'll take that anything that we get for free we, we enjoy um We've been given a whole load of champions uh, below, and we know that the fusion is an old school fusion, so it's probable these pieces are going to be parts of it. Uh, this month we have a legendary attack champion. His name is Her Herndug. Herndig. We'll go with Herndig, shall we? Um, dwarves attack magic, so they they have a lot of magic champions already with Trunda and so forth. But let's have a look. Um, so this is for good. It tells us what the boosts are here. Attacks one enemy. Grants an extra turn and decreases the cooldown of stasis strike by two, and you can up the damage. Generic A1, it's going to depend on the multipliers, which we'll have to look when it comes out. Don't have massive issues with this. Arcane Tempest attacks all enemies, has a 75% chance, and it does book to 100% chance, so that's big, of decreased defense and decreased accuracy for two turns. Potentially, if he got base speed, this is quite good. He is in the dwarf faction, as we know, and they have very few sources of attack um, defense down. And decrease accuracy is their new big thing. It's quite good in Doom Tower, I have to admit. Four turn cooldown, down to three turn cooldown. Got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen books. So he's bang on with where they're bringing him out, the champions at the moment. I like this ability so far. We're good with this champion. Stasis Strike. So this is the one that gets decreased with his A3. A1, sorry. Attacks one enemy. Fully depletes the target's turn meter. Attacks one enemy. Okay, so when he's ascended, which is the one we want, it decreases the turn meter. will also attack all enemies if the first attack is critical. It will, but you'll build him 100% crit rate. This has a... Uh, an AoE has a 75% chance of placing the weakened debuff for two turns. We'll also place HB debuff for two turns. After the attack on enemies whose turn meter are below 30%. Okay. This is interesting. Decreased defense for two turns. So uh, we can see here it's going to get reduced by to a four turn cooldown. Which means it isn't going to be... I was thinking about the clown boss here with decreased defense on a three-turn cooldown. And this on a four-turn cooldown. He may, if you run him at a four-three, he might be viable for clown boss. Obviously, the decreased accuracy is, is not going to be relevant. And is a, this one is not going to go on. Um, but I like it so far. Fills an enemy terminated by 10%. Yep. Every time they hit. So when he gets hit, he gains 10% turn meter. And 20% whenever an ally dies. This is quite nice. Uh, it's like a baby um, Morley effect. And then the aura. Unfortunately, I'm disappointed by the aura. It increases ally attack in arena battles. Arena is not about attack you don't put an aura in there it's either speed or resistance primarily so his aura is basically irrelevant um he has a nice kit a couple of uh so he's uh, this decrease aoe i would say he has a place in arena uh potentially he has a place in clan boss 
he's definitely almost a necessity in, in faction wars if you can get him that de AOE decrease defense is huge um they don't have one of those and he has weaken again it's all enemies so it's decreased defense and weaken outside of lydia and and venus he's one of the few she's one of the few uh, blah, blah. outside of lydia and venus uh, a couple of other void champions he's one of the few places you can get an aoe weaken and decrease defense on like a champion that's going to be I'm not going to say free to play friendly especially given the recent uh ways we've been going with fusions but he's definitely potential lady kimmy so this, we're getting the last lot of shadow kin we expect they're going to get some shadow kin before we have to start adding them to faction wars now what have we got here so she's magic support champion okay picture looks interesting attacks one enemy then we'll attack the enemy with this with the highest turn meter We'll attack the same enemy twice if the initial target also has the highest turn meter okay so this looks like she does three hits against someone who has the highest turn meter um that's interesting if that applies to clan boss or the initial target also has the highest turn meter so if you set up her to go last against like the dragon potentially or some of the bosses she may end up being going down um the second hit has a chance of decreasing the turn meter again may not won't work on those targets but she'll get her three hits in something like uh you could make her last in fire like that'd be good she's now the right affinity for 25 as well attacks enemies 75 percent of decreased accuracy and decreased speed also has a 75 percent chance of re reducing the turn meter we can see that this um we can see that this goes up to a hundred percent and we're at one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen books not too bad i like this ability i don't know decrease accuracy and decrease speed where potentially it has use in you know in fact um Obviously, it'll be useful in Faction Wars, but in the Doom Tower, like towards the late stages, some of them are like 250, 260 speed. It's, this will be a big deal. We've got A3. Removes one, one random buff from each enemy. Then has a set of buffs to 100% chance of placing block buffs for two turns on enemies who have buffs removed. Also fills the enemy turn meter of all allies by 15% and places a 50%. 50% increased accuracy and 30% increased speed on for two turns on a four turn cooldown. I like this. This is nice. She's good. I don't need to say anymore. See anymore. She's good. She's going to be amazing in Doom Tower, especially in the late game. Late, but like hard mode at the end. Whenever this champion places a debuff on an enemy, also decreases that turn meter by five percent. Amazing. She's placing two on here, three on here. Whenever this uh, champion or an ally receives a debuff, feels the turn. Wow. Just wow. You know, I can't really say enough about this. I need to see her def her additional abilities. She's a support champion. Increases the turn meter in ally by 30%. If you're lucky enough to get Lady Kimmy, treasure her. What have we got? We've got a legendary force, not Nobel. Maybe he's after the famous scientist. <laughs> lot of books one two three four five six seven eight nine ten thirteen okay not too bad attacks one enemy 40 percent chance of decreasing the duration of two random buffs under the target by one turn if the target is under fear or true fear this has a 65 percent chance of decreasing the duration of more buffs by the target potential of moving two buffs 50% chance, 75% chance, you can make it up with an additional 5% chance using masteries. It's okay. Tax one enemy will ignore 30% of the defense. Fills the champion's turn meter after the attack. If the target is under fear or true fear, decrease the decal down of dismay by one turn. On a two turn cooldown because of this. So potentially hit hard, hit another again. Okay. So we need to see if he's true fearing and true fearing a lot could be good 
attacks all enemies has a 75% chance, books to 100% of decreasing enemy turn meter by 20%. Okay. There are any enemies under fear or true fear debuffs will also fill this champion's turn meter by the amount those enemies lose. Like, if you can get true fear or fear out, he looks really strong. When enemy enemies turn me is fully depleted by any champion has fifty percent chance. This is this is a bad passive because you know to get a fully depletion, how many champions like Lissandra has one, couple of other champions do, but nothing that adds true fear. He might go well with um one of the the fear champions. I can't remember his name. Jack Harvest Jack. To add fear and true fear on the champions or he'd work really well with my child I'm, I'm giving i'm giving him a solid okay if you get him he will help you in faction wars it's probably where he stays unless you have one of the other mentioned champions so uh i believe we've got one two three four epics here it's probable these are the epics for the the old school fusion which we're looking at we've got one we've got one of the oh two uh wait one two We've got one of each type as well, so that makes more sense. Ogren tribes, magic. Fair enough. Selection of books. Again, it looks like they're they're hitting kind of 14, 15, 16 books as an average for everything new that comes out. Battering Rammers is A1, attacks one enemy, decreases the target tummy by 15% if he's already under decreased defense or decreased speed interesting not sure places 50 percent increased attack on this champion for two turns then attacks all enemies has a 100 percent chance booked of placing decreased defense so i don't actually think ogrens have a decreased defense champion for aoe so if you're struggling in faction wars this guy has potential he's magic affinity uh, so he's okay in arena you have to watch out for force teams but primarily a lot of the champions are magic and spirit and void in there we've got siege breaker we'll go for the ascended version places increased crit rate and increased crit damage then on this champion for two turns then attacks one enemy has a hundred percent chance of placing decreased speed so he places he places some buffs on himself then attacks The kit looks a little bit misjointed, but in theory with the AI setup, we can do this one into this one and then get the bonus. Increase crit rate ally and Doom Tower. He feels like a faction more champion. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use him anywhere else other than that. Unless, of course, you have, you're lacking a defense down champion for Arena. What have we got here? Gory spirit attack and that more shadow kin they are setting up to bring that faction more out for those of you trying to push last minute for lydia cold comfort attacks one enemy two times places an extra hit if the target is under freeze heals champion by 10 percent of the damage inflicted interesting attacks three times at random each hit has a 75 books to 100 chance of placing a one turn freeze debuff mm so one of the problems i have is obviously your with a one turn is you're never going to be able to pull this ability in uh you obviously you need to you put this down the enemy has a turn mate that's already partially filled because you're going so unless you're far, significantly faster than them you're not going to get back around attacks one enemy will ignore decrease increased defense and shield debuffs that's big Will ignore 50% of targets for defense if they're under a freeze debuff. Okay. Places counter attack buff and an increase buff on this champion for two turns if it kills an enemy. So one thing to note about freeze is you they reduce the damage they take by 25%. So this is not going to hit as hard as you think it is. And he's all single target. He would pair nicely with someone like Tormund or... Uh, Trying to think of freeze champions. Pixanel maybe. Counterattacks when the cold comfort counterattacks with the cold comfort is a one. When an enemy places a stun, sleep, or so whenever they place a solid um 
CC on the champion. Nice. I guess in conjunction with this, you can use it. It's interesting. It is a potential three hit though. Although only against bosses. Uh, sorry, not against bosses. We have Lizardmen. What have we got for Lizardmen? This faction really needs some things. Uh, Void Champion, okay. Leg Rack. Attacks one enemy, has a 30% chance of placing decreased speed. That's nice on an A1. It's a 50% chance. I like this. Uh, transfer Rush. Books to 100%. Free turn cooldown. Attacks all enemies. Has a 100%. Try again, shall we? Transfer Rush. It's a 3 turn cooldown on Booked. And 100% chance of stealing one random buff from each enemy. That's pretty strong. Because it will be 100% and accuracy. You know... Any of those champ potion dungeons, he's void, so you go any of those potion dungeons where they've got shields on. So that's pretty strong with his um, stealing buffs. wonder if he, he looks like he might be good versus the Scarab boss, uh, Doom Tower. Especially when we move on. Re so, uh, Scale of the Ages removes all debuffs from all allies, then places a block debuffs and a shield buff on the ally for two turns. The shield buff is equal to the, this champions 20 percent hp six it's on a four turn cooldown though so you're going to need another shielder to go to scarab and i think that's where his place is last grasp is his passive places block damage on this champion for one turn whenever their their damage drops below 30 percent nice and increases re alley resistance in all battles by 40 percent he looks like a good second shielder for scarab you know you can remove them anytime you, if you have enough resistance on him he will remove all the resistances on your team place decreased speed on the scarab boss as a small shield you are going to need you are going to need another shielder because it's four turn cooldown so you'll have a two turn gap without it but if you have someone like melga uh, or you have sausage frog vergum car i think his name is who can add to it and you'll have a good combo for the scarab it's quite nice skinwalkers it's a hippo i love the picture i love a hippo i'd be almost tempted to get this one just for this skinwalkers need champions as they're like the smallest faction almost um burly bash attacks one enemy has a 10 percent chance of placing a stun this is like a skinwalker special a1 so 30% chance two times interesting places increase attack and increase crit rate on all allies for two turns and it's on a three turn cooldown nice basic so okay so like we're all, I can already see before we carry on reading this that he's good for faction wars eternal war yeah ascended revives two random allies with 50% HP and fills their turn meter by 50% uh, after revival, places strengthen on all allies for two turns. Five turn cooldown. This guy helps their faction out no end. They don't have a reviver. Okay. They don't have anyone who's really going to be putting in work for them in that regard. You, you know, his buffs are okay. Increase attack and they've got a lot of attack champions. The stuns go in. I personally will probably get this champion over the dwarf because I'm struggling with Skinwalker faction wars. Uh, I like him. Maybe I'll get lucky and pull him. He's force, so he isn't going to be too hard to get. And we move on to the rares. Michaelis. It's a play on the, I was going to say some kind of fungi, and we can see he's already got that on his face. Viral spores. Yep, so he's going to be to do with fungi and viral spores and mushrooms and stuff, just from his, the way he's weird, worded interesting review for a uh, he's an ogre again look at that face that's a face only mum could love attacks one enemy heals by 30 percent chance that's pretty nice then also heals the ally with the lowest hp 10 percent of the of their so he can only heal himself 30 percent but he then also heals 30 percent on the enemy fungal privilege 
on a three turn cooldown. Places a shield buff on this champion for two turns equal to 25% of the max HP. Then places ally protection on all allies for two turns. Will also heal allies except for this champion by 10%. This is nice. Decreases the damage all allies receive by 5%, and this champion will take 10 Increase. Okay, so he's fat, good in faction wars. He's a healer. He does some shielding and protection for a rare. Not too bad. Demon spawn. Reminds me of the, the guy from Lord of the Rings. So, Hellborn Sprite. Okay, Shivering Malady. Attacks one enemy. Has a 25% chance, buffs to 50% chance of placing Weaken. That's actually quite nice. Don't see that very often on rares. Crumbling Flesh. Attacks one enemy three times. Each has a 50% chance. It bucks to 75% of placing heal reduction. Okay. Not bad. Then he's got passive. This is passive. Increases duration of all ally buffs by one turn. Ascended. Increases the duration of all ally buffs by one turn. And then places a 15% increased crit rate on all allies. Two turns. It's on a five turn cooldown. What is this? Like, how does it doesn't? It's a passive, so it doesn't go off. Does that mean that if I place a shield buff on myself, say I use a previously mentioned shielding champion up here, does that mean the whole team get an additional turn on that? It's interesting. Worth testing. That, I mean, that has some interesting connotations because he's got weak and his spirit, he's a support, he might be okay in clan boss. I don't know how that, that's going to work. It'll be a three turn cooldown as well, this ability. So you could have like Brogny go first and put his shield buff up and his debuff up, block debuffs up, and it'll last for three turns. And then you don't need the sand lash because he just passively does it. So it'd be easy to tune. I quite like this champion help one sprite. I'd be interested to see. Adachi, we've got some more Shadowkin. We've got defense Shadowkin. I don't th we may have a couple of those. Showy Slice. Attacks one enemy. Places provoke. 35% chance. Okay. Attacks great sword, sorry. Attacks all enemies. Places a shield buff on this champion for two turns, equal to 25%. All the HP, it's on a free turn cooldown. Interesting, AoE shields. Not too bad. Keeper, uh, ascended. Places a block debuffs on all allies for one turn. Also places a 30%, which is the small version. Got decre increased defense on all allies for two turns on a three turn cooldown. Hmm. I mean, I think it'd be good in faction wars. But I don't, he doesn't really shout to me, get this champion in. I want to see what's going on. We've got the assassin. He's also shadow, shadowborn. Um, magic champion, shadow kin, king's end. He's trying to kill the king here. Attacks one enemy, 50% chance of placing a five degree poison, buffs to 75%. That's not bad on an A1. We definitely haven't had some poisoners. Oh, I can already tell you he's in clan boss just by reading this next one. Attacks one enemy. Has a 75% chance of decreasing, of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the enemy by one turn. Nice. Drought of sleep. Attacks one enemy. Has a 100% chance of placing the small version of weaken two turns on a three turn cooldown this guy looks like a really nice early game clan boss champion poisons uh extend those poisons and weaken maybe he leads off with weaken i quite like this assassin he's probably going to be really good in faction wars and then we have some quality of life changes uh all in all i would say look out remember that this fusion for hundig hundig uh, is an old school fusion, so it will be collecting the potions that you need. We have, we know it's out on the seventh, so you've got four or five days from the time I put this up to get those potions in. Um, you're also going to need food for at least sixteen rares if they do it the way they do normally. 
and four epics so uh then i can put the numbers are all available on the discord i can put them in the comments if you need them remember that it's likely that you're going to have to go through these events if it's based on the previous ones they're not the easiest to get in the world and we do have one of each type of champion for the epics um if you're not going to be able to get the legendary champion himself i definitely would i have to point out i really like this guy um for some of the things that he brings when he got like uh as a shielder potentially in scarab he looks pretty good in there and if you are struggling for faction wars in, in the skinwalkers this guy is very useful in skinwalkers to the point having completed the dwarf faction wars as i say i'll probably be going for Hofrest the tusked that's all for this session of animals labs i ask as always that you like and subscribe you have any questions or anything you would like to know about the fusion please reach out to me in the comments until next time take care